Thanks for tuning in today, you guys. Today we're talking about guitar soloing and how to incorporate some different modes into your pentatonic scale. Now that sounds way trickier than it actually is for us guitar players because we don't have to know a lot of theory to start to use theory. All right, when we use a pentatonic scale riff like... Do it mostly off of knowing the scale, the shape and the pattern, and then playing it. We don't have to really know what notes we're playing. So to understand that more, watch my first video about how to play pentatonic scale solos. All right, that's my first lead guitar lesson. This is my second, and this one's more intermediate. So once you've mastered your pentatonics, then go to this video. If you haven't done that yet, go back to the pentatonics video. Um, so this one, we already know how to solo in pentatonic now, right? But we're starting to realize, okay, that sounds pretty plain. That sounds pretty usual, right? So there's just a little bit of flavor, right? But not that much so that it sounds foreign and strange, just enough that it sounds new and fresh. All right, so how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna move up closer so that you guys can really see my fret hands and you can see what I'm playing. I'm in A minor if you want to move in A minor as well. And as you know, this is our pentatonic. Now, I don't need to go into everything. I'm not going to go into what our harmonic minor scale is. I can do that in another video. Because really, that's not that important in this video. In this video, what's most important is talking about a term called accidentals. That's something that comes out of the scale. It's not in the scale, but it sounds good. Now it's in a different scale, like in a harmonic minor scale or in a Phrygian scale or some other mode, right? But we don't even need to know what those modes are right now because all we're learning to do is use different notes with our pentatonic. Here's a great way to practice. Use your pentatonic scale, but as you're playing, accidentally, that's why it's called an accidental, but it's not an accident, play, play a wrong note then try to incorporate that. So like if I go, that's a wrong note, right? Then I gotta make it happen. I gotta go. So that way it makes it sound like I played that accident on purpose. Now you can do that with everything. Now here's the exercise that we're gonna practice today, is if you can do every accident in the scale. So I want to incorporate every note, right? So that means I have to be able to incorporate this note, this note, this note, this note, that note, that note. That's every note that's not in the scale of our of our solo, right? So let's try to incorporate that really quickly, but make it sound organic. So do a solo that you normally do, but press one of those notes and then make that work in a riff. Then do another one of those notes and make that work in the riff. And that way, from section to section, you're including each note, making it happen, making it sound good. Now, I already did a guitar solo like that, so I'm just going to play that right here. Okay, so that was a guitar solo that, believe it or not, used every accidental. So every note that's available on the guitar was used in that solo, but it was primarily based around the pentatonic scale, so it doesn't sound that crazy. It's not like if I played the solo like this. Where it starts to sound like just nonsense, right? That's just random notes being played. It sounds kind of cool, but it sounds a lot cooler if I do.
you might want to do some more pentatonic runs in between each of those, but when we're practicing, we're just trying to hit wrong note like this. And we're trying to say, how do you make that sound good? Well, you go like. Right? How do you make this note sound good? Well, you go. note sounds good, right? So literally, we can take any note and we can go into any mode without knowing anything about music theory, as long as we stick to our pentatonics, right, and come back to that and incorporate the note tastefully, we're going to sound like we're using some pretty great music theory, right? We're going to be going into different modes, we're going to be going into jazz scales, we're going to be doing all sorts of things that sound fresh and innovative and honestly advanced without having to do anything too advanced. It's mostly on modal understanding and hearing it in your ear. So you've listened to it, that's where music listening helps a lot, you know, because then you'll know. That way I can get away with even, that's probably the hardest note to incorporate in a scale that's in this key. Right? Because it's totally conflicting. Let's play those at the same time. Sounds horrible, right? Or sounds terrible, but we can incorporate that note because we're able to sneak it in with like something like. Now I'm going to incorporate the note. So there you go, it's about bravery in a way. It's about hearing that note and then going to the next note that you know will be okay inside of your pentatonic scale and then saying, ooh, that was interesting, let me repeat it, let me incorporate it, let me change it, let me see, where else can I go inside the scale? So as you can see with that one, I like to just lean right into the note that it's trying to play, right? And then maybe go up and do a... Or maybe go down. There's so many things that you can do. It's literally infinite. And as long as you're resting on notes that are in the right scale, you can get away with accidentals that are in the wrong scale. So practice going through and with your solo, incorporate as many accidentals as you can. And A for effort, no matter what, but A plus, if you can go ahead and you can get every accidental into the scale and into your solo and still have it sound like it was all on purpose and that it's all really good. So that is the lesson for today. That is a little bit of lead soloing that's going to take you to the next level without you having to do all the research and studying to get there. Um, and just incorporate this tastefully. Don't go crazy with it because you'll start to sound like a, you know, like a jazz guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, thanks, you guys.